going to expect when you go and put on duty. So, and uh, you might be just doing a simple workup for a fever, or uh, you might get to see a lot of patients like this. somebody can come in with a cardiac arrest, somebody can come with a runover injury, it could be in polytrauma with a severe hemorrhagic shock, or you could just be uh, doing CPR on a neonate at 3 a.m. in the morning. So that's the beauty, beauty of it. You, wanna, you never know what's going to come through these doors when you get in for a few days, like calm before the storm. So, yeah. And it's a well-rounded specialty. You need to have a broad knowledge of a variety of specialties because the patient can present to you in any one of the stages of his or her disease process. So it's actually quite challenging to work in a busy ER setup like here. So yeah, I'm very happy that I'm in emergency medicine right now. Hi, I'm Dr. Dharma. I'm an emergency medicine resident at Kim's Hospital in Japan. About emergency medicine, I've always been enthralled by the amount of work that comes in in a day and how it can come down to nothing. I mean, in just a minute's time, you're in and out of a totally different environment. Every minute is a new minute. After my MBBS training, the next step was choosing a specialty. I always wanted to pursue a specialty that would push me to learn more every day. One that would give me a new challenge every day. Emergency medicine just, just that. It gives you a new challenge every day. It gives you a wide variety of cases and you need to have a wide variety of skills from you to help save a patient's life. I chose emergency medicine apart from many of the other radiology, neurology and other specialties because this gave me the unique chance to spend time with the patient when he most needs help, when he is most vulnerable. Hi, I am Dr. Shastri, working as a senior consultant in accident and emergency at the Max Hospital Socket. I am here from the last eight years. Now in India, almost from the uh, last 5 to 10 years, many of the corporate hospitals are changing the boards from casualty to the accident and emergency system. We have got a uh, very much advanced ambulances have been developed to take care of the pre-hospital care. So pre-hospital care and emergency care has become a very important advanced thing. Now, now we have got everything in the emergency department. We do bed tests, bedside tests, POCs, point of contact tests, minimum investigations like including bedside ultrasonographies, bedside echocardiographies, bedside x-rays and almost we reach a, a final diagnosis with the availability of the best laboratories which give us the results back. We are able to come to a working diagnosis which is very much near to the final diagnosis and then at the time of that juncture 
when we feel that we have to admit the patient we call the concerned consultants give them all the feedback who take them and put them in the hospitals otherwise majority of the patients with some tra minor trauma and minor problems have been discharged Ready, from one. Ready, one, two, three. Uh, hi, my name is Dr. Prasad. Uh, I'm a third year resident from Max Hospital uh, and doing my emergency medicine specialty. Uh, I wanted to do uh, multiple specialization, but after my MBS, the the, I had to choose one particular career as my specialization and I worked for a few years in different specialties but the only uh, uh, specialty which uh, gave me immense satisfaction and uh, a challenge for challenge every day uh, to do uh, to work is uh, emergency. It is really challenging. I mean, it's not an easy job. Uh, it is highly stressful. Uh, the work hours, uh, see, you always have to be on your toes. Okay. Again, as I said, uh, you have no idea what is coming through the doors, so you need to be on your toes each and every time. You don't have the luxury of time while managing the patient. A critically ill patient has to be managed as soon as the patient starts coming into the ER. Uh, you have to start managing. So, you don't have the luxury of time. You can't actually, you know, keep on, go back and read and come back and then sell to the patient. There is you can't do that. And then again, man management in the department, you are actually you are actually dealing with almost every other specialty. Because once you resuscitate and civilize the patient, you have to actually hand over the patient to some other specialty. See, you see patients from all specialties, I mean all walks of life. You start with the newborns, you see babies, you see children, you see adolescents, elderly people, pregnant ladies. See, almost every specialty of patients you have to manage. Because the unpredictability of the patients, the, those patients, you have no idea what is coming through the rules. And that is what is most interesting. It's completely different from all other departments. Uh, you'll be coming across all the cases, not just only one. Uh, you'll be coming across the cases you deal with that golden hour where you save lives and there's nothing more satisfying at the end of the day when you, you know, think back and see that you've saved one life today. It is beautiful. The this is the subject which is needed by the public at this hour. They need everything under one cover to attend at their at that part of the life where they are in a much agony. Okay, you should be dedicated and hardworking. There is no, we have shift times, okay, but there is no shift times for us. Maybe when we walk out is a time when a dying patient comes, then we are here for like two or three hours. We have to negotiate with a lot of things. So it's like, you should not come into the field thinking that like, you know, it's just like another day. I think it's very interesting to come up uh, uh, in such a field so that uh, you can be different and uh, we can serve the community as well. Not even community, you can uh, save a lot of lives. And, uh, and lots of advancements are coming up and uh, we can be special with this. When emergency medicine came in, it became standardized. Okay, what happened is like, you know, we have like, okay, the algorithms of VLS, ACLS, we teach, we train, like, you know, we are perfected. So we have that stop gap. You come home with your uh, father, your mother, or any of your relatives, they're dying, they're sick, we stabilize. If airway has to be addressed, we address, okay, we do the life saving interventions and also sometimes they might come to us in such a way that we don't need to intubate or ventilate, like you know, they might be a few hours before they pass away. We do the interventions to make sure that life sustains. Hi, my name is Liz Clark and I am a hospital administrator at Kim's Hospital in Trivandrum. And I have been involved in helping develop emergency medicine 
standards and programming at my hospital as well as within India. And I'm very excited about the prospects of Indian emergency medicine. It's an up and coming field that provides a lot of great potential career opportunities for people who are passionate about emergency medicine. Currently, there are less than 500 emergency medicine doctors in India, and that's for a population of 1.2 billion people. Um, so in terms of finding a job, finding a good hospital that will support your career, the field is wide open. Um, this is really a field. My name is Tamarish Kule. I'm the head and senior consultant of Department of Emergency Medicine at Max Healthcare New Delhi also the current president of the Society for Emergency Medicine in India. I am very excited to uh, share with all of you that emergency medicine has come a long way in India for the last 15 years. And this year, uh, National Board of uh, Examinations is launching emergency medicine as their new specialty course at the primary uh, specialty level. Uh, 14 years back when I took up emergency medicine, uh, I was not very sure about the future of emergency medicine uh, in India. But uh, today I can uh, proudly tell you that there are many more departments apart from my own uh, that boost uh, emergency medicine. And this has primarily come because of the public interest of getting good emergency care during the time which you need. That Indian emergency departments have some unique challenges not seen throughout the rest of the world. And so people who are interested in addressing those challenges are very welcome in an Indian Emergency Medicine Department, whether it's at my hospital or at another good hospital. And there are certainly some excellent hospitals in India that will require your services. You will be very attractive to a potential employer. So I'm going to urge you, if emergency medicine is right for you, not only should you take the DMB program in emergency medicine, compete for a seat, but as equally important, stay in India and build something great in India. I encourage you to do this, not just for yourself, but do this for your community. This will be one of the most rewarding career choices. Uh, talking of the career options in emergency medicine, after three years of successful completion of emergency medicine, you can choose subspecialties uh, which people do in emergency medicine and they are critical care, uh, you can do a fellowship in emergency medical services, in disaster medicine, uh, in ultrasound uh, and many more which are yet to come in our country. Uh, so uh, in summary, emergency medicine is a very unique specialty. Uh, we are there for everybody, for everything and at every time. So you, if you remember these three E, I'm sure uh, you will be liking the specialty and uh, make a great difference to every Indian uh, who may need emergency care at the time uh, when the resources and the people are not there and you can make a big difference in their life. My name is Evidence Mercy, to be Evidence Mercy Physician. Take a look at emergency medicine, the whole new face of medicine. Emergency medicine, working on my dream. We all are proud to be Evidence Mercy.